Hey everybody, welcome back for a brand new video about the show that's getting so close to war we can almost taste it, The Walking Dead. Warning, beyond this point there are spoilers for people who are not up to date in The Walking Dead TV universe and comic series. In this video we're going to give you our binge breakdown of the trailer for the upcoming 6th episode in season 10. We'd like to talk a little bit about the 3rd Walking Dead series, how it might tie in with Fear or the flagship show or even the Rick Grimes solo movie. We're also going to recap the major points of episode 5 and speculate on what's going to go down with Negan and his new friends. First, let's take a look at this promo, which has had the least content of any of the episode trailers so far this season, which could mean something big is about to go down. The opening shot shows someone getting ready by getting their weapons out. That someone is Carol, and although she was sidelined last episode, it seems she's back and her mission to take Alpha down has resumed. The next shot show Carol walking towards Alexandria's outer gates and Daryl is following her with concern. Where's the hot-headed loose cannon Daryl that we remember? Hopefully he'll be making an appearance sometime soon. Following that sequence, the trailer cuts to Daryl and Carol in the woods on some sort of surveillance mission. Daryl wants to know what they're doing and Carol explains. Alpha's horde. We're gonna find it. We're gonna destroy it. What do you think? Can they take out the horde? Would lighting a bunch of walkers on fire maybe do the trick? How well guarded is the horde? After that is an ominous looking shot of Alpha and Beta in the woods. Beta is giving the Whisperer leader his take on Negan. He cannot be trusted. And unfortunately for Alpha, he's most likely right on the money. Alpha wants Negan to be tested, and after last episode, whatever the Whisperer's got is going to be a piece of cake for Negan and Lucille 2.0. We still believe the original Lucille might resurface, but either way, the former savior's boss is back in play, and it's a certainty that people are going to die. Beta takes Negan on a walk with the walkers at night, and the trailer cuts to Carol creeping in the woods, although we believe it was only edited to make it look this way, and Carol won't actually encounter Negan in the woods, and this is in fact her looking for the staging area of the Horde. Daryl is watching over her, and we wonder if we'll get to see Daryl or Carol make any new kills, or if they will try to take a Whisperer prisoner. The following shots show Daryl trying to avoid detection in the woods, as his dialogue sounds like he's trying to talk Carol out of her plan. This is up. Everyone else is going to pay for it. We believe Carol deserves revenge, and the group would still find a way to fight off the Horde and just survive somehow. One walker gets somewhat close to Daryl, but obviously Mr. Dixon is going to be fine. The trailer then fades to black and cuts back into Eugene in the comms room on the radio, just trying to reach anyone he possibly can. We just want to stop a moment and admire Eugene's radio handle. This is Taterbug. Come on back. Could you take a guy named Taterbug seriously? The final shot shows us that Eugene finally gets an answer. Hello? This is most likely the same voice from the radio in the last shot of the season 9 finale. Anybody out there? We believe this is Stephanie from the comics who introduces Eugene to a huge organized community called the Commonwealth, which is one of the last storylines in Robert Kirkman's original books. What do you think? Will the series match the comics, or does Scott Gimple have something else in mind? The trailer for the third Walking Dead series that's coming out spring of next year lets us know in the first caption card that this spinoff will take place a decade after the apocalypse. We know from this press release by a city in Virginia where the series is filming that it is tentatively titled Monument. Could this community from Monument end up crossing over with the flagship series? We don't think it would happen that soon, but it's still way too early to tell. Monument will have a pretty big plane crash, and it appears these young kids that don't really remember the world before the apocalypse will go out to find if any of their loved ones survived the crash and help them get back to the safe community. It appears that Monument will be airing around the same time Season 10 wraps up. With Ezekiel and Michonne leaving the show, along with Maggie returning next season, it's anyone's guess how drastic the original show will change by the end of this season. It was confirmed by the showrunner that Fear the Walking Dead, AMC's second most popular show, will be returning for a season six. You can trust us, you don't have to be afraid. Although we don't know if it will coincide with the Monument series or start at some other time in the summer. We know there is some connection between the advanced community that was featured in Fear Season 5 and the group of people that took Rick off in the helicopter never to be seen again. We believe AMC might be trying to have a Walking Dead Universe new episode airing every week of the year, and we wouldn't mind that either. What do you think? 
Should they find a way to tie all three series and the film together, or is it better to keep them all separate? Finally, we wanted to give you a brief Rampage recap of Episode 5, highlighting our favorite moments, and fair warning that most of these clips are Negan-related. The episode starts with Kelly out in the woods alone, even though she knows her hearing has been an issue lately. She almost gets taken out by some walkers, but we find out later she somehow survived. We appreciate the diversity of having hearing impaired characters, but Kelly really should have been smarter here. The episode then cuts to Negan, who really steals the show. He is on his own until he realizes he has a tag along. This kid is super annoying, and we'll get more into that later. It's still unclear who set Negan free or if he escaped on his own, and we don't think we'll get answers in the next episode. What did you think? We believe it was Carol. She needed an excuse to go back out and search for a way to get revenge, and tracking Negan is a believable alibi. We also think Carol is smart enough to point a weapon at a weapon and realizes Negan could end up taking out at least some of the Whisperers without repercussions falling on the survivor camp. After that, we get to see Yumiko is kind of the hilltop boss now, and we find out about this ridiculous side story where Magna is stealing food and supplies. We don't love this development, but feel there may be more to the story than meets the eye, because otherwise it's pretty lame what Magna did. You're right about me. There is also more time with Sadiq, who ends up getting Ezekiel to admit he has the big C, which is a huge development and sad blow for the king. We believe Zeke could make it to the end of the season, but will eventually sacrifice himself, and that he may somehow help Eugene get to the Commonwealth before he takes his last breath. Another interesting side story is Aaron and Gamma. Can the man with the metal arm turn a whisperer against her queen? We believe it's possible, and that Gamma is definitely a wild card in this story. The episode also had some really cute Daryl Connie moments, and we wonder if something more will eventually develop between them. If you think about it, Daryl is one of the most quiet characters ever, so she would be kind of perfect for him. The Whisperer's Camp did have a little action this episode as Alpha made an example out of this Whisperer who questioned her, which seems to rub Gamma the wrong way, and we believe Alpha might be approaching her untimely demise, and there are just so many possible people who could end up taking her head. What do you think? Will it be Carol? Negan, Gamma, Alden, Ezekiel, or even Earl the Blacksmith? Will they have a fight over who gets to finally kill the bald-headed psycho? That pretty much covers all the main storylines, but we wanted to highlight our favorite moment of the episode as Negan talks to a young kid about nut-tapping. See, if nut-tapping were a sport, you wouldn't have to roll it up and you would still be in the Hall of Fame. This moment should be super creepy, but it ends up being a lot of fun. The last scene and our second favorite moment involves Negan. After killing this annoying sociopath kid, he goes looking for a fight and finds one in Beta. We know that Negan will be made a junior whisperer next episode, but that the fight between these two guys is inevitable. Who do you think would win in a fight between Negan and Beta? Will it be to the death? Before we go, we wanted to shout out Susie Ripley, aka Lieutenant Ripley, for always being a loyal fan to our channel and showcase her kick-ass artwork, which you can take an even better look at the link below in the video's description. Thanks so much for watching our videos, everyone. As always, we're on the lookout for promo videos and insider info to help prove or disprove all the rumors about our favorite ever-expanding zombie universe. Please let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Binge Rampage. Click the notification bell for our channel so you can see our next video as soon as it comes out. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, let me in and there you are. Oh. I am gonna hop.